Kiva, where we focus in, in on our user communities by showcasing some tips and tricks and some cool features and just general discussions about our technology. I'm your host, Edward Thompson, a pre-sales consultant turned semi-podcaster, and I'm keenly interested in all things technology. And with me is my co-host today, Mary Alice Emerald. Hey, uh, Mary Alice. Wondering if we can give the viewers sort of a quick summary of who you are and what you do. Yep. Hi, I'm Mary Alice. I'm a pre-sales consultant as well. And I've been at Aviva for four years. So I actually started off as part of a graduate program for the first year. And I've been in this pre-sales role focused on our HMI SCADA portfolio for about three years now. I studied chemical engineering at the University of Alabama, live in Houston, Texas, and I'm excited to be co-hosting this podcast with Edward. Awesome. Awesome. And I think before we get into sort of our key subjects, I mean, a lot of people probably are wondering or maybe interested in why we started this program. So maybe before we jump into sort of the key topic, which is really just talking about some of the cool features that we have around InTouch, maybe let's share some of the insight that we've been talking about in, in the background on the why and how, and maybe get some of your thoughts there, Mary Alice. Yeah, so we wanted to create these blog posts and release this podcast video series because we wanted to be able to provide more material and resources to our end users, our system integrators, our partners, really anyone who's using our technology and promote a lot of the cool things that we're doing at Aviva. And then we also wanted to uh, continue to build upon the community that we already have where people can come together and learn more about the Aviva HMI SCADA portfolio. Yeah, and, and I think from my point of view, I mean, the really the idea wasn't that new. I mean, we've done operating 15 in the past before, right? But, you know, I think we wanted to really kickstart things up again. And I think it was based upon some of the recent discussions I had at, you know, different industry events and just general meetings. I kept that a lot of, you know, folks were interested in learning more about our technologies, but I often felt like, you know, they're telling me, you know, it took a long time to basically learn about, you know, our, our systems. And they had to sacrifice, you know, a lot of their effort, their resources to basically learn about our systems there. And I, and I think, you know, for me, when I take a look at um, some of the things out there, really, you know, what we want to do as part of this operating 15 sort of program is just to keep it in a small time zone. So like 15 minutes to learn about our technologies and really go from there, I, I guess, right? And and really, you know, when, when I look at ena uh, sort of our programs here, like Enable, I think this is one of the things that we want to do is get involved in more of our communities by, you know, showcasing sort of our data that effort and providing some more realistic view on how they work with our technologies like Antouch or System Platform. And, and I think with these discussions, it certainly helps out a lot of users in different ways to build up an application, you know, and, you know, I, I think that's sort of where we should go at. Um, so I, I guess here we are in the first podcast podcast episode, trying to figure things out and sort of see how, what our community looks like. Uh, so, you know, the idea in my mind and Mary Alice's mind is, you know, we'll be talking to, to different folks to learn about how they apply our technologies uh, using our common tool sets and really give you some color commentary or just general tips on how to solve a particular problem. Um, so before, you know, we, we get off into sort of a deep dive into some of the technical conversations, I kind of want to focus in on a couple of things I've been hearing, or maybe you've been hearing this as well, Mary Alice, about our HMI and SCADA technologies. I, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is people tend to see our technologies as sort of dated. You know, when you take a look at InTouch, I mean, people say, hey, you know what, I've been using that product for a very long time, but, you know, I haven't used it since the early 2000s. And so one of the things that we want to sort of, you know, talk as part of this particular podcast series is really to give you guys an understanding of what we've done within the products, what we've listened to sort of feedback from the street to basically enhance it. So. Maybe I'll, I'll stop talking a little bit here and get some of your thoughts there, Mary Alice. Yeah, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right because I feel like a lot of the conversations that I've had or just hearing different people talk is that there is a big misconception out there that InTouch is outdated, but, you know, actually InTouch is the number one most widely used 
HMI in the market. And, and like you said, you know, we've had a lot of conversations with customers and we're continuing to make a large and active investment into InTouch into a lot of our products to release a lot of new features and, and functionality to the software. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that we've been constantly getting beaten up about is sort of our commercial models, right? So I think we've listened, we learned from, you know, over the years, and we've gone out with some cool programs that are out there right now. I think the one biggest one I think I, I do truly enjoy is our unlimited model. So, you know, one of the things that we've been hearing from our clients is saying, hey, we should have sort of unlimited clients, unlimited tags. And I think that's all available to us now. Um, you actually can really search for yourself if you want to by going to Google or any sort of search engine and basically saying, hey, let's take a look at in Aviva InTouch pricing. Um, I think the first two links out there are actually pointing to actually uh, our, our website. It gives you sort of full detailed view of what kind of features and sort of capabilities that we have in, in InTouch. And we actually publish this information as well now. Um, so I, I thought that was some cool stuff there. But I mean, anything else you could think about as terms of cool things, Mariana? Yeah, before? so I would say, you know, in addition to kind of the, the commercial side of things, the improvements there, there's been a lot of improvements, you know, in the, in the actual technology as well. So, you know, things like really developing and making the engineering efforts for building out your application a lot more efficient, a lot simpler we've made in touch available through a web client and then we're also we've also expanded the capabilities for communication as well so being able to communicate with things like mqtt opc ua things like that yeah and i don't know if we can cover all those subjects in the 15 minute allocated to us for today's session but we could probably experiment with that a little bit more in the future but you know, you piqued my interest here around OPC UA. I think you've created some content around that with a blog post that shows how we can actually integrate to those systems with minimum engineering. Is that is that true or sort of am I, am I uh, sort of lying here? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. So there should be, um, Omar should be linking a blog post, which, which everyone can take a look at to get a little bit more detail. So you can click on that link and it'll pull up the blog. Um, but you're ex exactly right. I mean, thinking about kind of the OPC way side of things, one of the thing, new features that we've added is the ability to automatically create tags in InTouch from an OPC way server. And so, you know, traditionally the way that tags were added as part of your InTouch application was in the tag name dictionary. You would go in, add your tag, you would select the access name, you do the configuration for the alarms and different things like that. And that could really be a time consuming process, especially if you had a lot of tags to build out as part of your application. And so with this new feature of being able to directly add drag and drop tags from your OPC UA server, it dramatically improves the efficiency for building out your InTouch application because we can add thousands and probably even more tags in just seconds um, in, into the InTouch application. I don't know. I, th I think our viewers probably want to see a more in-depth view of what you're talking about here. Because, I mean, it's hard to visualize, I would say, when, when you're talking about the complexities or just general workflows of these systems. So I'd love to see if you can share, share your screen here for a moment just to give us some insights into how it's done, actually. Yeah, so um, yeah, I just touch application. I can actually expand this arrow under tag dictionary and click external providers. And what this is doing, it's connecting to my OPC UA server. And now I can see all of my tags and areas that I have within my OPC UA server. So all of the data that I'm collecting from my plant. And it's just as simple as let's say I wanna add this reactor one and all of the tags as part of my reactor one into my InTouch application, I can just drag and drop into this model tag name pane. And I think I have about 70 or so different tags in here. And what you could see is in just seconds, um, now I have all of these tags as part of my InTouch application. Yeah, so maybe if we can step back a little bit and show just a general workflow before of how we actually done it with the tag name dictionary, just to give the viewers sort of a contrast between our newer feature set to what we used to do before. 
Yeah, definitely. So in my tag name dictionary, the way that you add a tag is I, I select a new tag. And what I can do is give that tag a name. I can, you know, configure the, let's, we'll just say tag one. I can look at the different details and alarms to configure as part of this. I need to select the tag type as well. So if this is a, you know, IO integer, I can select that. And then I would need to specify the asset name as part of that. So really a lot of steps and configuration goes into, and that's just for one tag. Whereas what I just did, what I just showed you is I added 70 tags in seconds. So adding 70 tags is much faster than just adding one tag through the tag name dictionary. Yeah. And you know what, this is a pretty cool feature because I, if I look at sort of what the industry is going towards is sort of open protocols like OPC UA or MQTT. And so the idea of this sort of having a module that basically can take out that information directly from, from those devices is pretty cool. Right. So I, I think, you I mean, you showed a lot of, you know, capabilities there that minimizes sort of the engineering engineers time to basically develop applications right uh now i noticed a couple things while you're putting things over i, I noticed that you put it into dollar sign system what, what does that all mean to, to the users out there yeah that's a good point so by default in in touch we have this dollar sign system alarm group and really alarm groups are just a way to track and manage the alarms that you have as part of your in touch application so I can actually create my in my own alarm group, which is nice because maybe I want to I want to make it easier to track my alarms by dividing out certain areas of the plant. So I can just come into my alarm group and click to add a new one. And let's say I want to name this one, have it aligned to alarm group. I can just add that as part of my in touch application uh, to be able to you know more easily kind of track and manage the alarms based on the certain areas of my plant. Yeah, so if you have like an alarm client control on a particular screen and you want to filter out just only the results for line number two, it's already done for you as part of that, right? So all your tags are associated in sort of that manner and everything's all configured that way. I mean, that, that's all cool. I mean, I think anything that can save users time while building out those applications sound really nice. Um, now, one of, the, one of the other things, that, which I, I don't know if you showed as part of the workflow, but you, you pull the whole entire hierarchy over and brought in all of the tags. What if I don't want all of them? I just want to pick certain ones. Can I do that? Absolutely, yeah. So if you don't want all the tags, you're right. What I did is I just dragged and dropped this reactor one and, and all of the tags under my reactor one were added in, into my uh, in-touch application. But maybe I only want to add, let's say, I, I, maybe I'm collecting a bunch of data, but I don't necessarily want all of that in my in-touch application. I can just select, you know, maybe I'll do these first five tags here and I can also drag and drop And What I'll do is I'll add these to that line to alarm group here. Um, so, yeah, so you can definitely pick and choose what you want to use from the OPC UA server. So I guess with people who are tying in their IoT systems, like with a sensor block and they're collecting all the sensor information, they can pick and choose the data that they want to. They're not exclusively having to tie in all of that data inside the system. Now, I don't think it's a concern nowadays with our licensing, right? Because you can have unlimited tags. But I think back in the day, that was so, some of the considerations people had to worry about was, okay, do I need this data or not, right? I, I don't think it matters for us now, but just sort of some thoughts for our users out there. So, no, that's pretty cool. Um, I know that we're getting close to time. And when I'm looking at sort of a bunch of things I want to talk about, maybe let's focus in on what can I do this data now? Because... I think that's the real meat in all this is, you know, I got the data inside my system, took me a couple minutes or seconds, depending on how you take a look at it, but what can I do with the graphics now? Yeah, so maybe just quickly before I get to the graphics part is what I wanted to kind of briefly mention here is I have the same tag names from my reactor one and reactor two. And what's nice as well is when I, if I have duplicate tag names, maybe in the OPC UA server, those duplicate tag names will be appended with an underscore and then a number. So InTouch will also handle that for you as well, which is really nice. So I just kind of wanted to briefly point that out. But yeah, maybe let's take a look at the, the graphic side of this well, because even from there, so I have this reactor graphic that I've created. And what's nice is there's been improvements to the 
efficiency for building out the visualization components as well within InTouch. So what I can actually do in here is I'm just going to do a very simple example, but maybe I want this tag to visualize. I can just drag and drop that onto this industrial graphic editor and then select the type of graphic that I want to associate to it. So I'm just going to do a very simple value display text. I can save this graphic here. And maybe what we can see now is, is in runtime, uh, this graphic uh, and, and that is already pulled in as part of this. So let me open up that window here. And we have our value coming in for that tag that we just created from our OPC UA server. Awesome. That, yeah, I mean, just showing those general workflows seem a lot more easier back when I developed these applications, right? So, you know, from integrating the data to, you know, putting it onto a particular screen. I mean, that's some cool stuff that you're showing out there. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think we're kind of up at time, but I, I kind of want to get your assessment. What, what else you want to talk about there, Mary Alice? Yeah, I mean, I think that was kind of all we wanted to, to show for today was, and, and again, maybe just to kind of highlight what we talked about. So one of the big features that was added is this ability to automatically create tags in InTouch from an OPC UA server. So what you should have seen is how simple and easy it is to connect to the OPC UA server, create those tags just by dragging and dropping, and then easily starting to build out the visualization uh, from those tags. And, and so it, it really makes the process of building out your application hopefully a lot simpler and a lot more time efficient as well. All right. Well, I think time's up for us. But what I want to say is, you know, thank you all for whoever's on the call today. But if you think you like what you see and you want to get some more interest in terms of, you know, engagement or just really, you know, working with us to develop content, uh, please reach out to us or subscribe to what we call our Viva Heroes HQ site. And this is where we're going to sort of solicit a lot of the information about, you know, what kind of ideas, concepts that we want to talk in the next sort of podcast post and really engage with you guys that way. Now, there's other forms of uh, social media that you can reach out to us on. So if you follow us at Aviva on LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, reach out to us for any of your technical needs. But you know, thank you so much, and we'll see you all in the next show there. But uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.